Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. If you are new here and you haven't seen my face before, hi, my name is Willow, I'm an aspiring costume designer and I make videos on the internet in my spare time. So, as I have said, I am a costume designer or an aspiring one at the very least. So for today, I thought what would be fun to do is doing a case study of a show and analysing the costumes and looking at what the designer tried to do and use that as a way of talking about these ideas of the basic premises of costume design. And so for this video, I'm going to be analysing the costumes of the smash hit musical Hamilton. There are three reasons why I've decided to do this musical. Number one, um, because it's been just put onto Disney Plus, um, not only is it very popular to talk about at the moment, but it's also really accessible. So it's something that people can look at as a reference very easily if they want to go back and watch it after watching this video to look at what I'm talking about. Number two is that the costume designer of Hamilton actually did a art with Business Insider looking at how they designed the costumes and talked through the choices that they made so I have actual evidence from the designer that these choices were made for the reasons that I'm going to talk about. Also number three is that whilst this is also wildly popular it also demonstrates a lot of the ideas that I wanted to talk about so I thought it was a perfect kind of marrying of all of the things I wanted to do in one show and so I'm gonna talk about that today. As I said, the costume designer for Hamilton, um, Paul Tazewell, did an article and an interview with Business Insider to talk through his choices and the reasons why certain costumes are done a certain way. So the way I'm gonna structure this video is going through the article, touching on points that I wanted to bring up and then bringing in my own thoughts and notes on that subject and kind of structuring it going through the article. How his initial research was looking at 18th century paintings and looking at the historical costume of the time. And I think that's always something important when you're doing a period piece um, or something that is rooted in a period and I'm speaking on this more from doing plays that were written in a certain period but you don't necessarily want to stage them there it's always still important to look at what people were wearing at the time that the play would have been written and originally performed um, or in this case the when the events were taking place because even if you don't end up going with that if you don't end up doing a fully period costume production um, you can still use that basis to make decisions on how you want to do the costume later and I'm going to talk through some of the choices um, that were made in the costume that relate to that in a minute. You can use colours that would have been important or you can use certain shapes of dress. So for example you can use a modern version of a cut of a dress that was used in a period to kind of link to that period but not explicitly do that. And the first thing that I wanted to touch on was they start by talking about the general ensemble costumes when they were trying to marry the two the, the two time periods together of the original source material time period and the modern setting the hip-hop genre of music used uh, they chose to do everything from the neck down in sort of period wear and then everything from the neck upward would be modern so all the hair and makeup that you see on the actors is more modern whereas the costumes are more based in the period and I like that because hair and makeup can be very subtle and um, if you're doing it very modern it can sometimes become unnoticeable so I think that's a nice way of making a reference to the modern and constantly remind the audience that this is a sort of amalgamation of two times uh, whilst not doing it too explicitly. One thing that the article talks about in terms of the chorus costumes which I really wanted to touch on is there's a quote from Tay as well which is we were also trying to figure out how to get the cast to relate to their clothes in a way that they relate to jeans and t-shirts and sneakers and I think this is interesting for two reasons. The first being that it speaks to the idea of trying to marry this original time period of the 18th century with the modern period and trying to make it so the actors can move around in those costumes in the same way they would modern clothes. But also I think in terms of general costume design, it speaks to the idea that when you're designing a costume for an actor, you want them to be able to be comfortable in it and it not to hinder their performance in any way. In some cases, this can be done um, sort of almost in the opposite way sometimes you do things to purposefully make an actor move a certain way um, in my dissertation at university i did a case study of uh, richard iii that was done um where i can't remember what the actor is called i'll put it in the notes if i can remember it um but the actor walked around on crutches and that would be very uncomfortable for the actor to do but it was done for a specific purpose and um, to create the idea that richard iii moved like a spider and so in terms of Hamilton, they wanted it to be 
almost as if they were wearing normal clothes or they were wearing like tracksuits and stuff so that they were comfortable so that they could move with complete ease and not be hindered by the costumes in any way. Further down in the article they go on to talk about that a bit more um, by uh, describing the fact that they used modern cut leggings with a stretch panel built into them to create an ease of movement and in place of running shoes the cast sported riding boots which are allegedly more comfortable. I question that purely because I used to do horse riding and I know how uncomfortable riding boots are, at least in England. They purposefully chose costumes which would look as accurate as they could to the periods they were performing it in, um, but would also be comfortable and easy to move in considering how much dancing the chorus do especially. Something more generally that I wanted to talk about with the use of a base costume is it is a very, not I don't want to say run of the mill, but it's a very strong good way to do costume especially if you're doing something like Hamilton which moves across a long period of time actors are playing multiple characters you have a chorus which has to move from character to character um, if you have if you have a play which is based in kind of a chorus and then you have people who are playing multiple characters on top of that using this idea of a base costume which you can build upon is something that is very commonly used throughout theatre by costume designers um, and I think what they did interestingly and very well with this production is the way that they design the base costumes to be almost like the undergarments of the period it automatically signals to the audience that that is the base costume and those are the chorus and then the characters who are important almost will have things built upon them um, and will have bright colours on them it creates very easily a distinction for the audience between the chorus and the key characters so yeah if you ever wondered why people do that so much that's why because it makes it easier for the audience to tell who's important on the stage